Pokemon has had a neato little feature for a while. Fossil Pokemon. You find some fossils, bring them to some Jurassic Park scientists, and boom! Dinosaur Pokemon. Or a plant thing that one time, but ancient Pokemon nonetheless. And then Pokemon Sword and Shield went and ruined! I mean, had a neat, fun idea thing that has to do with it all. But I mean, do you see these? Oh boy, oh boy, is Pokemon becoming Digimon now? Is this, is this Game Freak testing out the waters on Pokemon Fusion? Is that the next gen's gimmick? If this does well and is popular? We all know Dynamax is already dead in the water. But here's where things actually legitimately get way cool. As per usual, Game Freak does an A plus job on lore and origins for their designs and such. Like, it's just so good that it almost makes up for the lack of battle animations. But this whole dinosaur mix-up that's going on here is a perfect reflection of the Bone Wars. Oh yeah, there's a thing called the Bone Wars. Honestly, I wouldn't have even thought that paleontology was filled with so much drama. Drama that I'm going to get into right after the intro. This video is brought to you by our sponsor, WowBox. Get a monthly shipment of Japanese treats and goodies. Try something new each month. Expand your palate. Honestly, Japanese sweets are overall way tastier than most American ones. And right now, they've got a contest and want to give one of you a round trip to Japan. Details about that context, as well as a link to their website, are down in the description. Be sure to use the code WOW1 for the biggest deal they've ever done or ever will do. And thanks again to WowBox. The ghost logo is so cute. Back in ye olden days of the late 1800s to mid 1900s, paleontology was full of chaos. Full of people who didn't know what we now know about dinosaurs and had not yet invented things like CAT scans and computer simulations. All they had were shovels and guessing. But throughout this entire time period in Western civilization, especially in the UK, a vast amount of resources were put into research about our past and into our future. When it came to learning about our history and when it came to inventing things for the future, well, times were crazy, to say the least. I mean, England just had their first dog show. We were figuring out genetics. But as for paleontology, the first dinosaur fossils were discovered by British fossil hunter William Buckland in 1819, and science basically imploded. And paleontologists and fossil hunters all around the kingdom began exploring the world, all to be the next person to find a dinosaur. Slowly but surely, demystifying our distant past. But here's a problem. All these digs and expeditions, they cost a lot of doubloons, or whatever the British used, I don't know, rupees. But rich people and wealthy groups of folk liked fossils. They were cool and would do really good in museums, which were all the rage at the time. So they funded a lot of digs and expeditions. But, well, this meant that the paleontologists and fossil hunters had higher ups, and those higher ups well, they needed results, and these results were often wanted quickly. They didn't care as much about the things that they should have cared about, like accuracy, scientific integrity, or ethics. Hmm. So that's how we ended up with things like a T-Rex skull getting sawed just in half so that we could see what the inside looked like. And more importantly, for our current topic, dinosaur heads, or arms, or whatever, we're getting put onto dinosaurs of different species. Ah! I mean, there were just so many just loads upon heaps upon piles of general mix-ups too. One of my favorite examples is the Iguanodon. Originally, they thought they had a horn, like an iguana, hence the name. And I mean, you can't really blame them. There's this pointy looking bone and there's no obvious place for it. So, uh, a horn, it's a horn. But then some guy later, years later was all, but what if it's a thumb? And it turns out that that bone fit there perfectly, and a thumb it was. But as for total mix-ups, one of the most well-known instances of this was with the first restoration of the sauropod, or for the common folk like me, the brontosaurus, which, tangential fun fact, was just recently discovered. Even though you already thought it existed, but no, you were wrong. 
until now, anyway, or recently, because now you're right. You see, there was this guy named O.C. Marsh. He is well known for his many, many excavations and discoveries. In fact, he discovered the Bronto, the old one. But, you see, the old one didn't really exist because while Marsh was working on the restoration of the Brontosaurus, they had a hard time finding its skull. So he just decided to prop, plop, just ploop, plip, plop, Brachiosaurus skull onto the Brontosaurus skeleton body because eh, it's basically the same thing, right? Except in this case, they really, really weren't. And he had the audacity to not even tell anyone this fact for a good long while. So by the time he did come out, the general public already had formed an image of this dinosaur that didn't actually exist. <laughs> the scientific community quickly changed, but the general public, uh, well, not so much. Heck, even in Jurassic Park, there were incorrect dinos, but what are you gonna do? The damage has been lasting for forever. I mean, <laughs> Velociraptors the size of humans? Ha! <laughs> Hilarious. And then there's the marine Elasmosaurus. They put the head on the end of the tail instead of its neck. <laughs> Just like Dracovish. It's, it's, it's the wrong head on top of that, but it's on the end of a tail instead of a neck. And then another famous example is when a Diplodocus head was actually in a Patasaurus head, and so they switched it out with a Camarasaurus head, and oh! <laughs> Things like this happened very often with sauropods because of the way their head and necks were. Their heads were easily detached, disconnected from their bodies after they died, and they would either roll away or be taken away by predators. So sauropod heads are actually extremely rare amongst dinosaur fossils. The more you know. But all of this is just to say that the Galarian fossils, especially the vish part of the names and all that, are great. It's poking fun at the mixing up of fossils, especially heads that definitely didn't fit with the rest of the body. But I mean, can you really blame them? I mean, most dinosaur skulls and skeletons actually change pretty drastically as the dinosaur ages. Meaning, at times, the opposite problem actually happened. Rather than taking a bunch of different species and poop mashing them into one, Sometimes they would find a bunch of the same species and claim there were three or four different ones, when actually it was just one, but at different stages of life. So needless to say, back in the day, it was fairly difficult to actually figure out an animal based on just rocks. But the actual bone wars didn't help. Oh yeah, that was the hook. I gotta, I gotta explain the bone wars. The bone wars! Two famous paleontologists, that O.C. Marsh guy I mentioned, as well as E.D. Cope, were the biggest names in paleontology, and they had some steep competition. They wanted to discover and name as many dinosaurs as they could. It was a contest, and since they had a load of money, they could hire on help to do things, such as spy on the other guy, throw rocks to literally start fights, and destroy each other's fossils, mess up labels to confuse things for each other, and much, much more. And there were some guys, like David Baldwin, who actually played both sides. He just didn't let the other guy know that he was doing stuff for the other guy too. Smart man, really. And because they're trying to rush discover all these things, they started making more and more mistakes, and they began publishing paper after paper with problem after problem, and they started attacking each other in their papers too, eventually to the point where their papers were more pointing at the other guy saying he's wrong rather than bringing in more interesting information. So a load of scientific journals actually stopped publishing them. <laughs> Egad. They just got so careless. Speaking of which, the scientist that makes these fossil Pokemon for you, her name is Kara Liss. Careless? Kara Liss? Ha. Huh. And then all these messed up dinosaur fossils wound up getting models made and shown off at the Crystal Palace in London throughout the 1850s. At the time, it was a crazy revelation. The world's first dinosaur statue exhibition. But looking back, it's uh, almost entirely wrong. Again though, you can't really blame them. But these bone wars, this competition, did cause them to jumpstart paleontology, and they discovered over 130 species of dinosaur, which is pretty crazy considering the tech they had to work with. But their story is just one possible origin for these Pokemon. There is more. 
The fossil mix-up mechanic could also be a sort of parody on things like the Indominus Rex from Jurassic World, which is the body of a classic Tyrannosaurus Rex, and parts of the head of the Abelosaur, and horns made of genetic material from the Carnotaurus and Mojongavrosaurus Rugatops. I can say words, but also the Gigantosaurus. It's just a big mishmash of dinosaurs. And of course, there's also the fact that the canonical reason why the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies look the way they do is because they use frog DNA to bring the dinosaurs to life. And that Hammond wanted the dinos they created to be as scary and interesting as possible. And they didn't feel like scientifically accurate dinosaurs would do that, even though these lead scientists wanted them to be as paleontologically sound as possible. But that didn't happen, now did it? But what's also really cool about these Pokemon is that their Pokedex entries also hammer home that they are poking fun at how early paleontology saw dinosaurs. Slow, fat, and reptilian. Oh yeah, in case you've been hiding under a rock that only had old school dinosaur information, dinosaurs aren't much like most reptiles at all. They're significantly closer to birds than to modern reptiles, if anything. Yeah, even sauropods, aka long necks. They had bird-like lungs and very light bones. They were fairly fast too, and were fairly active, with tails much higher up than media normally portrays them. And because of that, they were able to run much quicker than media typically portrays them. They're much less fat and slow. And then you know, there's the whole feathers on the theropods. You can't forget those feathers. Dracozolt is poking fun at how monoraptorians are often made to have arms way too small for them. Or perhaps it's poking fun at how fast they are often sighted to run with those absolutely gargantuan legs in proportion to the rest of them. Also, that butt of its is possibly based on the Draconis family. Their skulls are always misorganized, and many of them have extremely different skulls while they are growing, so if you think about it, Dracozolt might actually be correct, except these are two pieces in different stages of dinosaur development. Arctozolt could be poking fun at the fact that we used to think that sauropods would have to have lived most of their lives half-submerged in water, like marshes and lakes, because how else would they be able to support their gargantuan bodies? Well, it turns out that it's by eating a large metric of food, having lungs that push oxygen throughout their bodies while inhaling and exhaling, and by having really, really light bones and good support systems for their necks, but that's not the point here. The preserving food with the ice on its body part of the dex entry is definitely making fun of how paleontologists used to theorize that sauropods would eat a bunch all at once and then go into a small hibernative state to process all the food instead of our current understanding which is that they spend most of their time standing still and just moving their neck in a zigzag to eat off of the trees nearest them. Yum, yum, yum. Dracovish is also making fun of our old belief that a lot of the bigger dinos, sauropods especially, would have to have lived semi-aquatic lives. And the 40 miles an hour thing could be poking fun at how ridiculously fast the dang T-Rex in Jurassic Park was. T-Rexes definitely could not keep up with a speeding jeep. Their speed was likely between 10 and 25 miles per hour. There was no danger in that scene at all if the dinosaur was accurate, that it wasn't. Jurassic Park's just ruining everything. <sighs> but throughout all of their dex entries, there are two times it mentions, but it went extinct because blank. And that's harkening back to the old fashioned and still all too common idea that the dinosaurs went extinct because they were bad at what they did. That's not really true. In reality, they went extinct because of drastic changes to the geography and climate that they couldn't adapt to quick enough. Not that there's much adapting you can do when the problem is that you're dying because the air is suddenly made of stuff that you can't breathe, or because the land is covered in ash again because of just billions of exploding volcanoes, I may be exaggerating. And there was also a meteor that one time. I don't know if you heard, but the meteor theory is basically confirmed now. It's cool. The Gulf of Mexico is where death came to all once before, and we're on the path to it happening again. But yeah, most dinosaurs were the perfect machine in their own niche. A lot of people think that they were these great lumbering things with sprawled out legs and shot teeth. But a lot of people would be surprised to learn that most dinosaurs had molars and beaks. Evolution isn't just Mother Nature throwing things together until they work. We aren't more evolved than the dinosaurs, or more superior to them. We just have tools that let us win. It's your noggin.
Ultimately, what I'm saying is, these Pokémon shouldn't exist. And are hashtag not my fossil mon. I mean, I love the idea of them, and they should totally exist, but like... They aren't real? It's like surgically combining a penguin and an eagle. Like, you shouldn't do that. It shouldn't exist. But I guess it'd be cool if it did. It's a peagle. An eguin. But now here comes a fun bit. What are these pieces? Well, this, which is basically fish, seems to be from the Dunkelosteus, a water-dwelling creature that had an incredibly thick skull. Ultimately, though, it's just an ancient fish that lived in the oceans. As interesting as you may find that, uh... Let's move on. Draco appears to be based off of the Draconis genus, or perhaps other small manoraptors. However, the family is rather large and contains many different dinosaurs, but the one we're looking at here would be the common Pachycephalosaurus. Again, it's way cooler sounding than what it actually is. In fact, interestingly enough, this dinosaur already has a Pokemon based off of it, Rampardos. It's the same technical genus. However, this one may or may not have had the hard skull plate. However, this specific dino named Draco Rex Hogwartus, that's actually what it's named, is slightly different, with a much smaller body and no hard skull plate. Though this dinosaur is still part of the hardhead family. However, all of these dinosaurs had a common thing in common. The ability to run rather fast in a straight line, which the Pokedex mentions. So yeah. It's Draco. Also, I feel like I gotta justify my thoughts here. Most fan art recreations of the Draco body make it out to be a Stegosaurus, which is very possible. I might even be leaning more towards it, but Pokemon pull from all over and are rarely just one thing. And I mean, we don't have a Stegosaurus Pokemon yet, and it's got the big spiky plates and all. But the reason I'm thinking it has these Monoraptorian traits is due to the naming. First of all, in every language it references dragons, and it's dragon type. And like I said, there's a whole genus of dinosaurs named Draco or Draconis. And while not as intense, they did also have spikes. Also notably, they had sharp claws like this, unlike the somewhat elephantish feet that Stegosaurus had. Also, Draco's out holds its tail less like actual Stegos and more like those Manoraptors. But uh, then again, these Pokemon are all based on dinosaur inaccuracies and mix-ups. So, the Stego thing could still very much be the case. Now, Arcto is a little different, as it's not actually a dinosaur. It seems to be based off of some sort of prehistoric mammal, perhaps a walrus or seal. And while there were huge walruses in the prehistoric seas, there really isn't anything else for us to go off of. But, I mean, Arcto means Arctic. Come on. But I mean, in the case of Arctozolt, this particular body structure just fits ancient walruses more than the other, more dinosaur contenders. We could look at the Mosasaur, or even the Ichthyosaur. I mean, they've got the right direction for the tail, but just not the length. That's more like the walrus tail. But I mean, these two creatures were flippered marine prehistoric dinosaurs that are actually just as much not dinosaurs as the walrus. What's strange though is that the fossil that gives you Arcto is called the Dino Fossil, and it's the least dino of the bunch. So either, this is another joke, I mean, these Bone Wars guys that I was talking about, at one point they confused a bison skeleton for a fossil. <laughs> Jeez. But if it's not that kind of joke, then maybe there is something more to it. After all, to be a dinosaur, all you need is the proper hind limbs that act in a way that is classified in the group dino. And we see that this body actually is presented in two ways. A fish and a biped creature. Neither of which really show the proper body mechanics to let me, without a doubt, put it in the dinosaur category. Being a dino has to do with the hip specifically, and this thing waddles, or flops, as if its hip was super wrong. So it's possible that in both instances they put it super backwards and upside down so it has to work around that, but, or it's just actually not a dinosaur. But this again goes into an old-time paleontology parody thingy, as back in the day it was quite common for anything from prehistory to be called a dinosaur, even though most of them are not at all, but hey, whatever. And finally, we have the best one, Zolt, the cute little raptor head. It's yellow, which we all know means it's electric. Also, it's a little dinosaur Pikachu! It's so cute! And so... And so, so sad with the Arctic body. Oh, I 
feel so bad for bringing this thing into existence. It's like, imagine if you gave birth and your baby has a nerve condition that means they are always experiencing the maximum amount of agony possible. It feels so bad. Why does it live? Zoltz appears to be based on raptors in general, though particularly the Paravians. Small, short arms, biggish feathers on the arms, speedy for their size, adorable little predators that we thought looked more like this. But it turns out this is more accurate. How cute. And do you want to know why these guys had feathers? Well, to help them balance while running super fast. Similarly to how ostriches run and use their wings to stabilize themselves while running. Honestly, ostriches aren't much different from dinosaurs. But despite the feathers, we do know that these things couldn't fly. Again, just like the ostrich. The things that determine if you can fly is your wingspan and of course, your ability to flap with the right strength. And with such a tiny, tiny front breastbone, most raptors, especially this Zolt character, would never be able to generate the power needed to flap its wings to fly. Not that that matters to a lot of bird Pokemon, but whatever. So all in all, I think that this gimmick is a good nod to real paleontology history. I just wish we could get the other halves of these dinos so that we know what they actually look like as a whole. Maybe we'll get them in the next games. But the current halves we have will be cut in the next games, so you, no one no one gets a whole one. They're gonna do that. Calling it now. Oh joy. But anyway, thanks for watching all this. Lord knows how long this video is going to be, and until next time, you never stop using your noggin. And this guy. He's got a brain the size of a peanut. <laughs>